So first, like I'll give you some background about myself. Uh, I received my bachelor degree in chemical engineering in China, and later I switched my study to the environmental organic chemistry uh, in Rutgers University and got my PhD in 2009. So I'm currently working on the Department of Health in New Jersey as a research scientist. Before I joined the Department of Health, uh, I have been a postdoctoral research associate in Rutgers University and in Georgia Institute of Technology. So I mean, my research experience has been focusing on the environmental chemistry of the, the pollutant chemicals. Specifically, uh, I have been studying the fit and transport of different environmental chemicals in various environmental compartments, including air, water, uh, center, and uh, now like I'm studying the accumulation in human body. I had been working on the remediation of the contaminant sites. We have a dependent defense funded project. To, like as I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of working in dependent house. So like now like my research focus is about the human exposure to the environmental chemicals. So overall, like the goal of my career is to enhance the understanding of the environmental chemistry of the potentially harmful chemicals and eventually promote the policy policy intervention to protect the environment and the human health. The first question I would like to talk about is why we need to study the data the environmental chemicals. So the, the environmental chemicals uh, into the environment through the multiple pathways uh, as this type of technology to re remediate the contaminant uh, setting the sites. Uh, I'm sure you can see like it could be released in, into the environment through the, in the, the combustion and the incineration. And it could also be released into the environment through the improper dumping of the waste. Uh, the general agriculture product discharge a lot of harmful chemicals uh, such as pesticides into the environment. Chemicals enter into the environment, environment go through a lot of physical, chemical, biological transformation processes and eventually cause, cause harm to our entire ecosystem. Like as uh, so, the chemicals move from the environment to human body through multiple pathways, including the ingestion of the, of the contaminated food, uh, the, the drinking the contaminated water, and also you know the inhalation of the contaminated uh, or the polluted air. Furthermore, like the absorption through the dermal contact with, is also a popular export pathway, especially for the volatile chemicals. So next, I would, I would like to talk about uh, what chemicals will be investigated by environmental chemists. So in general, we are interested in two groups of chemicals. First is working in the health department, and my major research focus is how they will impact the human health. The group of chemicals we call the legacy compounds. Based on the name, you could probably already can tell. These chemicals has been discontinued in the environmental. Uh, one of the major reasons for their discontinuing in production and application is due to the evidence showing their potential health concerns. So one class of chemicals I have been studying for over 10 years is called polychlorine biphenols. We call it short as PCBs. You probably have a chance to hear this name from news. It, like it, it has been it has been well studied for the last few decades. Family of compounds has uh, 209 continents. Uh, depending on the position, the number of the chlorine substitution in the biphenyl rings, it will have 209 members in this family. It heavily used in industry before 1970s. Uh, you will be very surprised to see, you know, there's still a lot of funding to study these chemicals in the environment and the human bodies, even 40 years later now. It is because due to their like persistence and like, accumulation in the environment, it's, they're just like never disappearing from the environment. Another type of compounds like we, we are studying is called emerging compounds. The emerging compounds are the type of compounds which their like, like manufacture and application are still ongoing. However, there's appearing scientific evidence showing their potential health concerns, but not fully proved. So therefore, you know, like the, the regulation still, you know, has not prohibited their production and application. However, like with like accumulated evidence from the scientific field, uh, 
if all the robust evidence pointing to their harmful effects, they will become less compounds in the future. So one type of these compounds which which are very which might be one of the hardest might might be one of the hardest compound class study is called PFAS. I'm not surprising like you may have heard it from the social media a lot. This type of compound has been widely used in the livestock in cooking wares, the waterproof clothing, and also the you know as used as surfactant and uh, and also fair fat foams. Actually, we are currently collaborating with Rutgers University for a fatter project. So we like we analyze the uh, you know is a fair fetters blood. So just want to see you know like. Uh, how much they commute, like career, like exposure. Here, just want to give you give you a glimpse about how we study these compounds in lab. Um, give you a glimpse about how we study these compounds in lab. In our health department, like we are mostly dealing with uh, like uh, biological samples, including blood, urine and uh, even saliva in you know, all kinds of like, um, like a body related, body excreted samples. Uh, so here's like a, a part I have been mainly dealing with uh, a serum. Human serum is just like the superlatent of the blood after being centrifuged. Like first, like, you know, we will extract the interest the chemicals from the human serum uh, through like a virus or like solvents and the chemical reagents. After that, we'll reduce the volume of the samples through the evaporation process, and later uh, we'll remove the interfering chemicals uh, from the, this kind of like we call the like cleanup process. Uh, more specifically, here we use a solid phase extraction. It means we use this the, the solid phase to extract away the interfering chemicals and only keep the uh, interest the target analysis. After everything, uh, all the procedure accomplished, we'll, the last step is we'll analyze in the uh, gas chromatograph coupled with mass spectrometry as a detector. So some of you probably started learning AP chemistry and you will get a, a general understanding about the chromatograph and the, and the mass spectrometry. They are the most powerful modern tools for the detection of chemicals, especially the trace amount and uh, chemicals in the very complicated matrices like uh, hum, like biological matrices, which is in general more, much more complicated than environmental matrices. So after being analyzed in the instrumentation, you will get those kind of, tip, this is a typical showing for of the chromatogram you will see. So the chromatogram will show the separate peaks uh, representing each uh, result analyzed from your sample and you can quantify the level of these chemicals based on the peak area. Just like a very general uh, in like introduction about the quantification of these chemicals. And I also want to, to introduce like uh, introduce you about the two projects we have been working on. The first project is the New Jersey Health and Nutrition Examination Survey we call Engine Hands. So the overall objective of this study is like we want to establish the first population based on monitoring all surveillance study in, in New Jersey. This is followed by a national effort called Enhance, that's a US nationwide surveillance. So in that way, like we were funded by CDC to conduct the statewide surveillance study. So in our study, like we have been focusing on multi-group of chemicals, including some toxic metals, uh, and uh, most of them are organic organic chemicals, including the PCBs I already introduced earlier, and the PFAS uh, I also introduced you earlier. Actually, PFAS is one of the most funded research in our department because it's emerging, so more evidence needed to be collected, uh, you know, to show their health effect. So in general, you can think um, Emerging chemicals uh, receive much more attention of, and the heavy funding from the lax chemicals. Here, I just want to show you what we will get from those study. Actually, this, the current study is still ongoing, but we've already finished the first round study before. So I just show you the 
from our previous round, just to show you, you know, after all the subject enrollment of human, object, human subject and, and the, the lab study, what you will get. So after all this, you will like get the determined concentration of different analysts in different subjects, and you conduct some statistic analysis. And in that way, you it will give you like, you know, like the risk level of these chemicals. And you can also compare this with the uh, enhance the U.S. national water levels. So in that way, you will see the exposure of the New Jersey residents to um, the population. Um, we are living in New Jersey, and New Jersey is a very heavily populated state, and we are one of the most contaminated states because a lot of like industry like uh, here. So so that's like we we have some advantage of receiving those kind of like. Uh, the funding from CC just because of our like actual need. Baseline data for the exporter or New Year related to various chemicals and you can compare with the nationwide levels and then you can derive your risk range. Another study I want to introduce to you all is one of the study which is related to the early diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. New Jersey now like has the second highest rate of autism in the nation. So as a, as part of efforts of New Jersey Biomonitoring Program, we conduct a study like exploring the association between the elevated levels of some suspected chemicals with the potential like autism indicative biomarkers from the newborn baby. So like uh, for all the newborn baby from most of the states, states in U United States, uh, you will the the blood will be sampled on the in, within twenty four hours of their born. So currently, like I'm working on, you know, how to analyze the, the suspected uh, harmful chemicals which will cause uh, AS uh, autism disorder from this like uh, this circle that you are, you are seeing here. So like you know, establish association between the suspect chemicals with the autism biomarkers. In that way, you could. Uh, Diagnose some like newborn baby which has a high risk of having, having autism. In that way, the early therapeutic intervention could be implemented, and uh, which could uh, help with the uh, like uh, later like, development delays. For autism, like the early intervention is very critical in for the treatment of the kids. So some of the suspected chemicals, uh, including uh, the toxic metals. Uh, uh, like uh, which are like uh, always uh, very notoriously known for their like toxicity. I would say in general, these toxic metals are more toxic than the you know like the PCB that I introduced you earlier, and also the pesticides. So in currently, like uh, our research program has been investigating like uh, the metals and the uh, PCB and B and the pesticides, and I'm responsible for the for the organic part. So this is an ongoing project and. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't have like data to show you. I still develop method because of, of the very tiny amount of sample, as I showed you earlier. This is very challenging for the analytical chemistry to detect these uh, extremely trace amount of chemicals from extremely low volume samples. So, like our first objective is to develop a sensitive and robust method to analyze these suspected chemicals from the newborn baby dried blood spots. And uh, hopefully, like eventually, we could establish association of the elevated levels of chemicals with uh, uh, autism biomarkers. In that way, we could accomplish the goal of early intervention, early diagnosis, and early intervention. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, like uh, this is one of the extremely challenging project in my career because uh, extremely low sample. Just to give you a rough idea about how much sample I could get for each baby is basically less than 100 microliter. And as you can see, like the blood is very complicated the reservoir, which have like tens of thousands of chemicals and ingredients there. And I just help and my goal is to isolate a few of my interest chemicals. So you, you could kind of imagine the change of this project. And plus some other like uh, potential challenging associated with this project is like a uh, contamination. If you, when you, wherever you're dealing with extremely low concentration samples, contamination is always the biggest hurdle. And uh, 
and also it's also challenging the model instrumentation sensitivity as like the recurrent sensitivity is is, is uh, incredibly low. So we'll see how the project goes. And that's pretty much like what I want to share with you all today about like you know my research background and the projects I'm currently working on. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer and share with you all about my my thoughts. Thank you.